Section 12 of the Georgics. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. The Georgics by Virgil. Translated by Harriet Waters Preston. Book 4, Part 2. But favor me yet while i the story tell of marvellous powers the bees do hold of jove because in his natal hour they served him well swift to the symbols brazen din to move of the curetes and unwearying in the caverns of dicta fed the heavenly king for they of all the little creatures of earth alone do gather in cities and uprear as one the sons to whom they have given birth and order their ways lifelong by laws austere while the joys of the hearth and certain habitations are theirs and a fatherland among the nations and theirs the forethought even in summer-tide to toil for the time of tempest and of want and that they have gleaned securely away to hide while some do under a steadfast covenant watch over the store and some are busy afield and some are gathering the lucid gums distilled from tree stems for the tears of the daffodil wherewith to make the beginnings of the comb within the walls of the hive and thence with skill to hang the persistent wax and other some the full-grown hope of the race lead forth to light and others yet with honey as nectar bright the crowded cells distend while unto a few it falleth to stand like sentries at the gates by turns the cloudy tokens of rain to view in heaven or on the returning toilers wait and ease their fardels else in battle array forming they from their dwellings chase away the indolent folk the drones and everywhere is the glow of toil and the honey's thymy scent no busier the monster band of cyclops there in the mountains on their thunderbolts intent handling the molten masses promptly to ply the bellows fashioned of bull's hide mightily or to quench the hiss of the metal in the wave while the weight of their anvils maketh etna groan and the powerful arms a giant rhythm have as the bulk of the iron is lifted and is thrown from one to the other upon the forceps strong not otherwise dare i liken in my song small things with great are the cecropian bees by the inborn hunger of possession driven to labour in kind wherefore their fortresses and towns are i in the ward of the ancients given and the curious carving of each roof-tree small but the young and strong returning at even fall weary of limb their treasure of time unlaid for that they have supped on cassia or arbuta boughs or off the golden willow a banquet made or where the crocus's fiery blossom shows or dark blue hyacinth or the lime tree sheen and the rest of all is one as their toil hath been till the morn returns again and the gates are wide and the bees do never upon their going stay but range until admonished of eventide back from their feasting in all the fields come they and ready for rest and shelter yet once more buzz in the boundaries murmur about the door till unto their bedchambers they softly creep and silence followeth all the night unbroken while each tired body getteth his own sweet sleep and never in sooth if coming rains give token venture they far abroad nor scale the height of heaven when the east is risen in his might but under the sheltering ramparts of their town go safe to water and brief the flights they make or as light skiffs the turbulent waves would drown take ballast of sand they tiny pebbles take and lift in the air and stay thereon resist the fluctuant motions of the hollow mist this also is matter of praise and wonderment the custom of bees in bringing forth their young for never do they cohabit nor are spent their frames with fury of passion nor yet wrung with anguish of travail but off dainty leaves and delicate grass blades evermore receives her little ones on her lips the mother bee 
she too whenever the throne doth vacant fall findeth a king with the following of romans we and shapeth anew each waxen court and hall wherefore though off the bees allured wide by love of the beauteous blossoms and by pride in the gathering of honey break on cruel stones their fragile wings and under their burdens die though narrow the life-span of these generous ones seven summers barely yet immortally the race lives on and steadfast evermore the star of their line they sires of sires tell o'er ay and they render homage unto their king such as not egypt nor the famed lydian land nor median hydaspes nor the parthians bring only one soul hath all the obedient band he sitting secure but once their monarch lost rent is the covenant of the loyal host and rent the curious wicker cells wherein was laid their honey treasure for he the lord of all their labour and all their love hath been forever throng and press the vociferous horde round the king's going and on their shoulders bear him oft for him imperil their bodies fair and wounds for him and glorious death do dare and some who deepliest on these marvels dwell discover an emanation in the bees of the world soul divine a breath as well of the pure ether unto the thought of these one same divinity dwelleth everywhere in the reaches of earth and sea and the deeps of air out of whose infinite sources all that live men and the tribes of the field and of the wood their vapour of being do at birth receive then tender it back again and in the flood remerge for death herein is found no place they to the host of the stars do wing their ways and the summits of heaven behold their endless days now he who is fain to enter the tiny house and steal the treasure of sweetness hid therein carrieth water within his mouth and blows first over the hive the bees therefrom to win or drives them forth with waving of pungent smoke the opulent produce of this busy folk is twice in the year expressed and harvested once when the pleiad teagete first does smile over the land and under her light foot tread the river oceanus and again erewhile when the self-same star is flying from heaven fain to hide from the stormy fish in the winter main sadly but what immeasurable wrath what lacerate wounds for them who seek her store what venom infused the insulted creature hath she drives her barb in the veins with a thrust so sore the living weapon doth in the wound remain but if thou dreadest the winter's cruel strain and taking thought for the morrow of bees dost feel pity on their sore hearts and fortunes low what lets thee from enkindling for their weal time branches under the hive dissevering so the empty cells for the lizard unbeknown hides there and the beetle blind his couch hath strewn or the doingless drone sits down at another's board or the hornet fierce doth war with arms unfair or the direful moth or the spider most abhorred still of minerva curtains the doorways there with swaying webs the lowlier fallen before yon stricken race they labour to rise the more and flower-built granaries crowd with richer store the like moreover of human maladies anguish of sickness languor in all the frame the law of their being bringeth unto the bees note then the unvarying symptoms of the same the colour is changed in them who suffer thus and wild the countenance and cadaverous till the bodies of such as lose the light of day forth of their homes are by their fellows borne and laid with sorrowful funeral rites away else cling they unto the portals all forlorn with knitted feet for in their cells lie still famished and spent and shrunken with mortal chill dull now the murmur that falleth upon the ear and deep incessant whispering like the tone of wintry auster within a forest sear or the vexed ocean when his billows moan refluent or even as ravening fires do roar shut in close furnaces wherefore let me implore thou light the galbanus for its fragrant smoke hard by 
or proffer honey in tubes of reed so putting a heart in thy outwearied folk and toiling them forth to the remembered feed and flavour the lure wherewith thou then dost ply with bruised galls and savour of rose leaves dry or the rich liquor that remaineth of wine long boiled or the juices of scythius dead ripe fruit or attic thyme or the centuries fragrance fine but free in the fields asking no long pursuit there groweth a star-like flower the labourers call a mellus hardy and many branched and tall and the golden head of it is ringed around with countless rays of the violet's dusky hue bitter to taste yet in fair garlands bound for holy altars in valleys grazed anew or oft by the windings of mella shepherds call this flower whose root with sweet wine thou shalt maul and set by the doors of the hive in baskets full but the offspring of bees oft faileth suddenly nor means hath any the master to restore their line wherefore commemorate will i that which the lord of arcadia learned of yore and how from the weltering gore of bullock slain the honeyed race hath wakened to life again so then the marvellous fable to relate from its first origin in the long ago a land there is where the dwellers fortunate in macedonian canopus behold the slow submerging of all the land by river nile and visit their fields in pictured craft the while hard by the persians dwell who carry the quiver but egypt getteth her green from the black loam borne wide abroad by her seven disparted river swept onward still from the dusky ethiop's home and the lineage of bees is indestructible in all that land by the power of this one spell for a sight confined is chosen seeing it falls in with this very purpose and thereupon a structure set and bounded by four straight walls with a narrow tiled roof above them thrown and windows four affronting the winds of heaven and a slantwise entrance unto the daylight given thereafter a youthful steer is found and tan with horns already curling his forehead o'er and the breath of his mouth and of his nostrils twain smothered and stayed although he struggled sore and all with violent beatings bruised and blent the viscera within the whole integument then do men leave the carcass imprisoned so first crowding the ribs with time boughs odorous and new called cassia when first the west winds blow and waken to life the waters do they thus ere the rosy blossoms in all the meadows gleam or the prattling swallow hang his nest from the beam and the days go by and the liquor seethes lukewarm in the macerate bones till wonderful to behold myriads of living things footless do swarm there out then straightway resonant wings unfold and throng and throng the ether like summer rain or shafts the string of the archer's bow that strain when the agile parthians people a battle plain end of section twelve